It's Patent Friday. Would you be interested in a Canon camera with a curved sensor? Well, what if I told you I had 10 lens embodiments for this curved sensor? That's right, I've got 10 of them. Listen more after the intro. Hi, I'm Simon. Thanks for tuning in to The Ordinary Filmmaker. Subscribe to get notifications of new videos like this one so you don't miss any news, rumors, gear reviews, or tutorials. And a big thanks to Atomos for sponsoring The Ordinary Filmmaker. I'm using the Ninja 5 external recorder for all my studio work as it saves me an awful lot of time in post. Want to speed up your editing? Well, use my links down below to purchase your own Ninja. And now for the news. Canon News reports that Canon has applied for a patent on several outstanding primes used with curved sensors. Now, this would require different lens mount, and on the plus side, the lenses would be easier to design and manufacture. Curved sensors have the advantage of reducing the complexity of the lens because the rays of light travel the same distance, regardless of the position of the sensor. But now for the exciting part. The patent includes 10 lens embodiments. Some of these are stunning concepts, like the 50mm f1.0 with a back focus of 9mm and a total length of 76.3. Well, what about the 35mm f1.2 with a back focus also of 9mm and a length of 117.93 millimeters. Now I'm particularly interested in the 100mm f1.2 with a back focus of 19.27 and a lens length of 138.22. These are all the lenses in the patent. Maybe I'm overworked this week. Maybe I'm just a little bit too tired, but I'm not excited by this patent news. Maybe it's because we won't likely see anything like this for a while. Maybe it's because I've already got the R5 and don't really need to invest thousands more in a new system. Or maybe because patents protect companies' investment into research and development, and this could be a long way off or show up in another application, if at all. I think it's a combination of all of the above. I am intrigued by several lenses, the 100, the 50, and the 35mm, and the technology is definitely interesting, so from a camera point of view, yes, this news is interesting, but I can't really see any additional capabilities that deliver on capabilities I don't already have or can't get with my current system. Now, I'm not saying these aren't innovative or make lens easier to design and make, but as an end user, I'm not seeing how they make my life easier or better or faster. And well, am I being too cranky for a Friday? Am I not seeing the light right? Let me know in the comments section down below. But now, let's go behind the scenes. Okay, I admit, I am tired, um, but I don't feel, you know that kind of tired you get when you've been up for two days straight? I don't feel that sense of exhaustion. I just feel a little bit like I'm running at 85%. But it's been a crazy busy week. I mean really crazy busy. It's been firing on all fronts. I've been working up till about 11 o'clock many nights. And on St. Patrick's Day, I normally shoot my son even if it's only for about 30 seconds of end video because I do it every year. You can see how he grows from year to year. Well, I didn't do that. So I'm gonna have, to the magic of film, I'm gonna shoot it tomorrow and I'm just going to say it was shot on St. Patrick's Day. You know, in a few years from now, no one's going to remember, right? And one of the reasons I'm going to shoot tomorrow is the weather. It's going up to 16 degrees Celsius or 60 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's one of those forecasts where I think we're going to blow past that. I think they're just being a little bit conservative. You know those weather forecasts when it's been cold for a long time and then they bump up the temperature quite a bit, and you know it's going to go right through that? Well, I'm going to get out there. I'm going to explore spring. Uh, I don't care about social distancing. I don't care about staying at home. It doesn't mean I'm not going to follow it. I just mean I want to get the sun on my face. I want to feel that warmth. You know that warmth when it's been cold for so long? Yeah. And I want to get out there. I want to. I, I moved the bird feeder to a better part in the backyard so that way I can sit on my deck with the 800 millimeter and it's not going to spook the birds because where I've got it right now, as soon as I move anywhere in the backyard, they're gone. Except the morning doves. The morning doves, they seem to be pretty content with me walking within 10 feet of them. They're like, yeah, we're cool, man. Yeah, 
we're chilling. And morning doves are like that. They're a very chill kind of bird. So I'm looking to have a very, I'm looking for a very relaxing weekend. Um, like the temperature is going to be north of 60 degrees. I'm really looking forward to this. Uh, the village mayor is going to come by and I'm not sure exactly what we're going to do yet. Now at the top of my list, I thought we would do a detailed review of the Sony a7S III uh, in relation to the Canon EOS R5. Because quite often when you're thinking of one of these cameras, you're always thinking of the other. Uh, and I'll say this right off the bat, both are excellent cameras. And I kind of wish I had both of them here with me right now. And for a couple of weeks, I did. So I really do appreciate both cameras. And uh, spoilers, um, I'm not going to say either one is a terrible camera. I think they're both really good cameras. So this is going to be more of a compare and contrast between the two. And I'm hoping to set that up with the village mayor. He's going to be my Barbara Walters, and I'm going to be the guy in the hot seat. Or maybe if the weather's just too good, I'm going to shoot whatever I can find. Um, there's lots of birds. All, all the robins are back. The blackbirds are back. The Canada geese have flown in. It must be a busy time at the airport because the birds are they're, they're coming here in mass. It is spring, whether we feel it or not, whether we whether it's March the 20th or not, it doesn't matter because the birds are coming in. It, it's feeling very spring. Even outside when I was um, raking the grass the other day, I could just hear a cacophony of bird sounds and it was just, it was wonderful. Um, so I feel better about that. Maybe I'll go down and check to see if the uh, muskrats or beavers are awakening up. Um, maybe the ice is melting, I don't know. But I have since I shot that video in December, I haven't seen them since. And what I think happened in that video it got a little warm and something broke in one of the houses so they quickly woke up got outside fixed it and then went back inside and went to sleep they're probably hibernating creatures because i don't even see any tracks down by their huts huts is probably not the term used but it's the term i'm using for them so i feel like i can relax this weekend i don't have any major projects coming my way unless of course news comes out then i'll plan on dealing with that and i also want to give you a bit of an update on editing on my macbook pro as I told you, I sold my iMac Pro on the weekend, and I've been editing with, the, with my old 2015 MacBook Pro, which has been gathering dust. And you know what? Look at the videos I put out this week. It's actually done a fair job. Uh, the one part where it does slow down is on the AMA video. Those are just almost too long to be able to do. Um, the last one is 50 minutes long, and I was going to put a whole bunch of um, your Spring Challenge videos at the end of it, but... I, I don't think I'll be able to get that video properly processed. Um, it takes a good sometimes hour to two to export with the iMac Pro, but I didn't shoot in C-Log, so I'm hoping it'll be a lot quicker. But all these other videos that I'm doing, like this one here, they're pretty quick. I don't really notice much of a difference in speed, but I think part of that is attributed to the Ninja 5 delivering me Apple ProRes 422 right off the unit. So that's obviously saving me some time. It saved me time in terms of transcoding. It saved me times in terms of not having to move anything so when I got the Ninja 5, uh, it came with some things and not others. So I was really happy to see it came with an Angelbird 512 gigabyte SD card, but it didn't come with any batteries. It didn't come with uh, an SSD caddy. Uh, it didn't come with a cable. So I scrambled because, well, even Amazon would, would have been next day at the earliest. And Amazon didn't have these cables, so it was B&H. And they're usually about five business days away. So I went to my local computer store and I picked up just a simple $10 um, you know, SATA SSD to USB cable, and it works perfectly. It's got a nice tight fit, so it's not loose, and that's really good. And I'm using actually a very cheap HDMI cable. I bought it for doing a review on the Lolo, YOLO box, but uh, that didn't go very well. It wasn't compatible with the R5, and so I got stuck with that cable. But thankfully, I, ended, I bought it because it's it's not causing me any problems with the Ninja 5, and I was a bit concerned because a lot of the issues people do complain about with the R5 is usually cable related. So you usually end up having to get that expensive Atomos cable. So I might still get the Atomos cable. We'll just have to wait and see, but uh, that's all going well. And the last thing I want to remind you about in the, behind the scenes, the spring challenge. Don't forget to submit your video. We've got just under two weeks left. I think I've got four or five entries right now and um, they're looking pretty good so go ahead produce a video i mean this weekend at least in ontario uh, central ontario southern ontario ohio new york um, the weather's looking terrific so get out there shoot spring capture the birds do whatever you want capture spring as you see it and you'll have a chance of winning a 512 gigabyte cf express card but that's it for now
Don't forget to subscribe for your chance to win two Angelbird 128GB AV Pro MK2 V90 SD cards along with a dual UHS-2 card reader. Well, you could also win a Yulon-Z LED light package with accent lights, an underwater light, and various other flat panel lights to light up your subject, or as a great starter kit for you or somebody else that you know starting your own YouTube channel. I'll be awarding these two prize bundles once the channel reaches 30,000, and then I'll be offering up additional prize bundles all the way up to 100,000. Once this channel reaches 100,000, I'll be awarding a brand new Canon EOS R5 full-frame mirrorless camera to one lucky viewer. And on that bombshell, thanks so much for watching The Ordinary Filmmaker. Get out there and enjoy spring, and we'll see you again soon.